Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We just come into your presence once again, bringing ourselves under your feet. Thank you for today's meeting, Lord, for today's Zoom meeting. We just lift all ourselves into your hand, humbly and pray that uh, your, your presence will go with us as we listen to Brother Vincent, who is going to bring the word to us. Thank you, Lord, for guiding us, for protecting us under your Banner, Lord, we come, we come, commit ourselves at your hands and want to listen to your word, want to sincerely take each and every word that you, you bring to us. Jesus, thank you. And use it. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, my brother Hubert, for leading us in that opening prayer. And my brother and sisters, you. today, we are going to take a special teaching. We are going to study how the first shepherds, how the shepherds got the good news of the birth of Jesus. And you know, my brothers and sisters, unlike whenever there is a big news, you today hear it on television, you have everybody shooting out messages on WhatsApp, you will hear everybody going around and you know giving the news as though they want to be the first reporters of the good news. But today, when we begin to reflect on that first Christmas night, the Lord gave the good news of the birth of the Savior, not to the palace, not to CNN, not to Jerusalem Times, not to anybody, you know, in the, in the, in the municipality or in the, in the ruler's office, but he gave the message to simple, lowly shepherds. And you know, today what we are going to reflect on is on... We look chapter 2, we are going to read from verse number 8 onwards and we are going to see how when Jesus was born, the very night he was born, how the shepherds had a visitation from the angel and then a choir of angels sang to them and told them the good news. They told them exactly where the, the, the baby Jesus was born. They even gave them the, you know, there was no Google at that time. There was no, you know, WhatsApp. There was no internet. There was no telephone. There was no GPS. There was nothing to guide the shepherds. But all that the, 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 the angels told them was, in a manger in Bethlehem, the baby will be wrapped in a swaddling clothes and you will find there a child with his mother and his father. So, brothers and sisters, let's quickly go and read Luke chapter 2, verse 8 to 13. And of course, we'll go further as, as, as time permits. So, let's read Luke chapter 2, verses 8 onwards. we we'll read this, these verses and we'll begin to understand exactly what happened that night when Jesus was born in the stable in Bethlehem. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. 
you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising god and saying glory to god in the highest and on earth peace good will toward men and it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven the shepherds said one to another let us now go even to unto bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass which the lord has made known unto us and they came with haste and found mary and joseph and the babe lying in a manger and when they had seen it they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child and all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds but mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart and the shepherds returned glorifying and praising god for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them praise god thank you jesus thank you jesus you know my sisters and brothers the passage that we just read just now is talking about the very night the very night jesus was born now i why i'm stressing this the very night jesus was born you know just two days ago today is the 27th two days ago or three days ago on the 24th night or two days ago on 25th we celebrated christmas and you know my sister and brothers when you go to verse number 8 it tells us and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field keeping watch over their flock by night now i want you all to keep a close watch on this verse number 8 we are talking about the night jesus was born we are talking the night the savior came into this world and you must remember every sabbath the scriptures that were read in the in the in the, in the synagogues were all talking about the coming messiah all those scriptures as people like the, the prophets had prophesied isaiah prophesied micah prophesied jeremiah prophesied malachi prophesied all these prophets had, had had prophesied that one day the savior the messiah would come and here is the night the messiah is born but today's passage is referring to the shepherds is referring to the shepherds and i want you to look very closely it says on the same night the same night jesus was born shepherds were in the field keeping watch over their flock by night you know my brothers and sisters why i'm saying this can you stop it can you stop the screen share for a moment You know my sister and brothers I want you to understand this for a moment the word of god says that the shepherds were keeping watch over their sheep the same night Jesus was born and you know as I was reflecting on this I was asking the holy spirit because all these years I was always told that it was a cold winter night it was a cold winter night probably it was snowing i was i was studying about the land of israel it actually snows in israel at this time somewhere between november and and february and imagine if the sheep are out there and the shepherds are out there they must be the craziest shepherds if they are going to keep watch over their flocks in winter which only goes to prove to us that jesus was not born in winter again you know many of you right now will be saying we celebrate all these years in winter there are songs about cold winter night all these things came from where no in scripture does it ever point out that jesus was born in winter but brothers and sisters 
the shepherds were watching their flock by night, which means the sheep would have been out in the winter and those crazy shepherds would have been out in the winter looking after their sheep. And remember, again, when the sheep were being taken out for grazing, you don't go there when there is a snowfall, when it is cold winter, because you know what? Those, those sheep will freeze, those, those shepherds will freeze, and therefore, it's very clear from Scripture, whether you go to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that Jesus was not born during the winter. He was born in a different season. We don't know exactly what the season was, but definitely he was not born in winter. And so, brothers and sisters, the word of God tells us that on the night Jesus was born, shepherds were looking after their sheep. And, and you need to understand a little bit about shepherds and about sheep. You know, my sister and brothers, when shepherds took their sheep to graze, different shepherds had different sheep. So you know what? If all the shepherds got together and they brought their sheep together for the night, it was a sheep pen. And in that sheep pen, there were sheep of different shepherds. And when the morning came, the shepherd simply went to the gatekeeper. He opened the door and the shepherd opened his mouth and he called his sheep by name. And instead of all the sheep that were there of different shepherds coming out, only the sheep that belonged to the shepherd, they heard his voice and they went out to graze. Which only goes to show to us that the shepherds recognized their sheep and the sheep recognized the voice of their shepherds. So there are two things that we can learn today is Different shepherds looking after their sheep. It was the time of grazing. It was the time to, you know, for the, for the sheep to be fed. They, they were taking them at the pastures because it was the season where the sheep would find green pastures. The second thing is, it was not a winter night. And therefore, all these shepherds were probably, you know, just lying there in, in, uh, close to the sheep pen, waiting for it to be daybreak while the sheep were in a closed area so that those wolves or those wild animals would not come and attack their sheep. Now, I, why am I giving you all this explanation, my sister and brothers? That very night, that very night when the angel appeared, now let's go to, verse, let's go to the next verse. I want to show you a little bit of a build up so that you begin to understand why the Lord went to the shepherds and not to anybody else and how we are going to learn today what is the meaning of this visitation of those angels to the shepherds? So verse number nine. And no, the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them and they were so afraid. Now it says that on the night Jesus was born, shepherds were watching over their sheep in the sheepfold. That means there was a total cordoned area all the sheep were in that because, you know, if you get the sheep all exposed, it's possible by night the wolves would come, the animals would come and simply pounce on the, on the sheep. And, you know, many of the sheep would have been eaten up. So they used to have a special enclosure, which was a sheep pen, where all the shepherds would put. And now, while the shepherds are watching over their sheep, or while their sheep are in that sheep fold, an angel of the Lord appears to them. And the glory of the Lord shines upon them. My brothers and sisters, you need to understand that, that on a cold winter night, this would not have been possible because the shepherds would never have been exposed out in the open. They would have probably frozen to death. The sheep would have frozen to death. And therefore, it would have been absolutely you know, foolish on the part of any shepherd to be out there in the open when it is so cold in winter because instead of they looking after their sheep, somebody would have to look after them or give them warm clothing because it was not a conducive temperature for them to be out in the open. And the, and the word of God tells us in verse number nine that the angel appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone upon them and they were afraid. You must remember, my sister and brothers, when you have a divine experience, Listen, I'm not talking about the divine experience in the spirit or, you know, when you hear the word. I'm talking about a physical visitation from an angel. 
you are definitely going to be afraid. You know, we talk about angels, we talk about the glory of angels, but when you literally are in front of the, of the glory of an angel, surely those guys are going to be afraid. And the first thing that the angel says to them in verse number 10, look at what it says in verse number 10. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. And look at what the angel says. The first thing he says, do not be afraid. And why does he say do not be afraid? Because by this time, they were completely in fear. They were so afraid. That's what verse number nine says. They were completely afraid. They were so afraid. And the first thing the angel assures them, he says, do not be afraid because I have come to bring you great tidings. Now, you know, my sister and brothers, when you read verse number 10, a thought should come to our mind. Can you stop that? A thought should come to our mind. And what is this thought? Why does the Lord send this announcement of his birth to simple shepherds? Why does he send only to shepherds? Why does the Lord not go to Herod's palace? Why doesn't he go to the Pharisees? Why doesn't he go to the chief priest? Why doesn't he go to the mayor? Why doesn't he go to somebody, you know, who's going to announce this news to everybody in Jerusalem, to all of Israel? Why does the Lord announce this news only to the shepherds? And you know, my brothers and sisters, one of the reasons which you also need to understand even today, remember when Jesus came to this earth, we were just reflecting on that at the beginning of this about the spirit of Christmas. You know, the spirit of Christmas is not only during the time when we celebrate Christmas as, as, as the birthday of Jesus, but the spirit of Christmas is supposed to be 24-7, 365 days because the birth of Jesus was the announcement of good news. It was great tidings, not only for those shepherds, but it was for all. Can we go back again to that verse? Because I want to show you what the angel said in that particular verse. They said, I have come to bring good tidings to all, not to only to the shepherds. And yet, my sisters and brothers, you will see. Look at what verse number 10 says. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. To all people, which includes you and me today, which includes all the generations that have come since Jesus came to this earth. And it also includes the generations and people who are still not born, who are still not coming to this world. Remember, my brothers and sisters, Christmas is supposed to be the great, you know, good tidings of great joy. Because the coming of the Messiah was only for the purpose of our salvation. Remember, the human race was damned. The human race was lost because of the sin of Adam. There was no way that anybody could be saved until that payment had to be done. And there was not a single person on this planet Earth who could ever do that payment because everybody was disqualified. Nobody was sinless. And therefore, God had to become man. He had to come on this earth, bypassing the sin of Adam. And therefore, the coming of the Messiah, the coming of Jesus was definitely good tidings. But the question is, why did the Lord go to the shepherds? And why did he go to all the great men of Jerusalem? Why did he go to all the, you know, the prominent men of Jerusalem? Why did he go to the priests? Why did he go to people in the palace who could announce that? You know, my sister and brothers, the greatest event in the history of mankind, the greatest event that is in the world today, it was proclaimed to the humblest of men. Remember, the shepherds were the humblest of men. God simply bypassed the great men of those days. And what is, why was it? You know, my sister and brothers, God is not impressed with, you know, uh, things that man is impressed with. You know, we are, we are always impressed with, with if, if somebody is born in, you know, to, to some particular well-known person, if somebody is born, you know, to the king of England or to the queen of some particular place or born, born in the prime minister's palace or somebody is born to a very, you know, prominent citizen of the country, 
people are very impressed because they want to know with how which hospital they were born which 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 how did the baby come which which doctor operated the hospital and they want to know every detail because it is a big person and and with, with the media today there is so much for example if you know of any film star or any you know any rock star and all when they usually have a child you immediately you see the newspaper you see the whatsapp you see the media always talking about that even a little child who's born probably even doesn't know the amount of hue and cry that is outside the paparazzi the photographs the cameramen the videos they're all flocking the the, the 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 hospitals because you know somebody of great prominence is born but you know my sister and brothers these shepherds may have been the great men of that day in god's eyes they were the great men in god's eyes and you know my sister and brothers kings would have been afraid of a new king surely they would have been afraid of a new king in fact you will see that in tomorrow's gospel herod destroyed all the children who were 2 years and, and below because those wise men who came from the east bypassed uh, herod and went back home to a different to their country without coming and informing the location of where the king was born In fact, he had sent them to Bethlehem. He never knew that the baby was born in Bethlehem. By this time, was already two years old and was already in the house in Nazareth. And so, my sisters and brothers, a new king would surely have been insecure. A new king would have definitely felt afraid because that would have been a competition. That's exactly what happened to Herod. And you know, it could have been you know dangerous to let any tyrant or somebody who's very insecure know. the birth of the king of kings and the lord of lords please understand this you know god in his wisdom even though he doesn't want to announce this news to everybody he doesn't want everyone to make a hue and cry about it he wants people who are humble in order to know exactly when his son is born i want to fast forward to today 2021 2021 is just over the christmas celebration is over people must be saying oh now it will be christmas 2022 and you know my sister and brothers if we have really understood the spirit of christmas we have really understood why the lord gave the birth of his son in order to lowly shepherds why was it shepherds why wasn't it probably to the baker why wasn't it probably to the fisherman why wasn't it probably to the to the to the cobbler or maybe to the doctor or to the or to the you know to the some engineer or some technical person why only to the shepherds and you know my sister and brothers a shepherd understands the heart of a shepherd a shepherd always understands the heart of a shepherd and therefore god who was the true shepherd and is the true shepherd jesus himself said in john chapter 10 i want to take you there because we need to understand the heart of a shepherd why the lord chose shepherds when we read this verse about 2000 years later many of us don't even think for a moment why the lord jesus christ birth was announced to lowly shepherds so john chapter 10 let us go to verses 11 to 14 John chapter 10 verses 11 to 14 these are the words of Jesus himself and you know when Jesus speaks he tells us exactly about who's a good shepherd I am the good shepherd the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep but he that is a hireling and not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees and the wolf catches them and scatters the sheep the hireling flees because he is a hireling and cares not for the sheep i am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine praise god thank you jesus look at what verse number 11 says jesus says i am the good shepherd the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep we are in 2021 who is the shepherd who gave his life for the sheep 
I'm asking you, my sisters and brothers, who's that shepherd who gave his life for his sheep? It is none other than the shepherd himself, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He was born in a lowly manger. He was born where only shepherds came to know that he is born. And you know, my sisters and brothers, when Jesus was born, he sent the news to shepherds because they were shepherds who were willing to die for their sheep. Now the word of God tells us, the word of God tells us that when Jesus was born and the shepherds were looking after their sheep, the angel comes to them and tells them there is a baby that is born in Bethlehem. Now you must remember the place where the angels had, the, the, the shepherds had the visitation of the angel and actually where Jesus was born in Bethlehem was not a distance of about two, three miles. It was close to about at least about 40 to 50 kilometers, which means that the shepherds were not able to go that very night. They would have probably reached after two or three days after Jesus was born in the manger in Bethlehem. And so my sisters and brothers, the very first night of Christmas, the night of Christmas, only Joseph, Mary, and Jesus was there. But the shepherds, they leave their sheep in the sheepfold and they make the journey all the way to Bethlehem because the angels have told them that a baby is born in the manger in Bethlehem. And you know, my sister and brothers, because these are true shepherds, because they are shepherds who are ready to give their life for their sheep, they are responsible shepherds. They have kept their sheep in the sheepfold Remember, the sheepfold was a total enclosure. They have ensured that their sheep are secure. They have ensured that no animals are going to touch their sheep. And they have left that place in order to see the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You know, my sister and brothers, what is the job of a true shepherd? A true shepherd is willing to give his life for his sheep. And therefore, if he's going to leave his sheep and go to some other place, his responsibility is to take care of his sheep, to see that somebody else is taking care of the sheep so that those sheep are not going to be attacked by wolves. They are not going to be left all high and dry. That's so that when the sheep shepherds have gone away, wolves can come, attack them, destroy them, and there is no more sheep left or many of the sheep have lost their life. These shepherds, they knew what, means, what it means to be responsible shepherds. And therefore the Lord appears to the shepherds who are responsible, who have not just abandoned their sheep. They have kept them in the sheepfold and they have been told, leave the sheep with the sheep keeper, with the gatekeeper. Now you can leave that place Go and visit the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in Bethlehem because the angels have told them that this is where the baby is going to be born. This is where the baby is going to be born in the manger and the sign. Okay, let's go further. Let's go. Let's go back to our chapter. Remember my sister and brothers, before we go further, before we go there, I want you to remember this. A shepherd is willing to give his life for his sheep. You don't call anybody a shepherd just because there is a term used shepherd in the church. You don't call anyone a shepherd. A shepherd should be willing to give his life for his sheep. When COVID-19 comes, Omicron comes, Tommy Chrome comes, Johnny Chrome comes, anybody comes, a true shepherd is willing to die for his sheep. He's willing to go and look after his sheep. He's willing to see that they are being taken care of because He's really a shepherd. He's not concerned about his own safety. He's not concerned about his own life. He's interested in the welfare of his sheep. And therefore, a shepherd is one who's willing to give his life for his sheep. This is the good shepherd that we have, who not only said in his words in John 10.10, 10, but he was willing to give his life for his sheep because he never considered his life to be more precious he considered the life of his sheep to be more precious than his own life. So that is why Jesus is the true shepherd 
and those today who really claim themselves to be shepherds, who can say that we are shepherds of the sheep, are the ones who are willing to give their life for their sheep, are willing to see that their sheep are going to be protected, they are going to be really encouraged, they are going to be looked after while the shepherds are going about doing their, their other work, going about, you know, when the situation is going to be bad for their sheep. Look at what it says. No, no, let's go back to our verse, uh, Luke chapter uh, 2, verse number 10. Okay, it says, And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. And then he says in verse number 11, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord, which is Christ the Lord. Remember, my sister and brothers, these are the words of the angel to the shepherds. The shepherds are hearing these words from a divine creature, from an angel that in the town of David, in the city of David, the Christ, the Messiah, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings is born. Now, you know, my sister and brothers, fast forward to today, 2021. You know, many of us know that Jesus was born 2000 years ago. That's why we have been celebrating Christmas for so many years. We all know that, you know, Jesus was born in Bethlehem. We have sung carols. We have sung all these things that Jesus was born. And we sing a lot of hymns. We even we celebrated Christmas. In fact, it's a build up to Christmas. You know, we do a lot of things. We reach out to somebody. You know, we give food to the poor. We make some sweets at home. We put up a Christmas tree. We have Santa Claus. We have balloons. We have decoration of our houses. We paint the houses. We do all those things on the outside. But on that first night of Christmas, was there a Christmas tree? Was there a crib? Was there a crib in the sense that the crib was in the manger? The very child Jesus. And in that crib, was there any Santa Claus anywhere giving gifts to anybody? Was there any balloons or was there painting of the walls? What, the, what, what Jerusalem and all the palace walls actually cleaned and painted because, you know, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords was to be born. There was absolutely no knowledge that even the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords had landed on planet Earth. And therefore, there was no painting of the walls. There was no repair of the roads. There was nothing done when the first Christmas took place. But the angel of the Lord appeared to lowly shepherds because the shepherds, they understand a responsibility that only a shepherd will understand. They know that they have to look after their sheep, that they have to even at times put their risk, their life on the risk, on, on the line in order to protect their sheep. And that is a true shepherd. And Jesus said, as we saw in John 10, 10, he says, I am the good shepherd. I am ready to lay my life for my sheep. You know, my sister and brothers, very few people who claim to be shepherds today can say this with confidence. Very few people today who call themselves shepherds can say this in 2021 and all these years with confidence and with boldness that they are really shepherds. Yes, you can go from place to place, you know, preach the word of God and share the word of God and you can just go about. But really to be a shepherd is to cry with that person, to love with that person, to encourage that person, to take them with you so that they will be on that journey connected to the shepherd of shepherds and his name is Jesus Christ. Remember my sister and brothers, when you and I have been called by the Lord as, you know, as sons and daughters of the heavenly father, by default, you become a shepherd. You become a shepherd first and foremost, to the people whom God has entrusted to you. If you, are, if, you are, if you live in a family, if you are a father, you are a mother, you are a parent, you are a shepherd to your children. You are supposed to protect your children, not just protect your children, you know, just you know, giving them food and looking after their shelter, but protect their souls, giving them the food which will nourish their souls. You and I as parents are the first shepherds of the sheep that God has entrusted to us. 
you know, my sister and brothers, if we are not looking after the sheep of our own families, we are going out to preach the gospel. But at, back in our own home, we are simply not carrying out the responsibility of which God has entrusted to us. We are actually not doing justice or we are not doing the responsibility that God has entrusted to us. Let us go ahead and take it out from the family. Go to the church today. Go to the body of Christ. In the body of Christ, there are leaders today. There are people who have been entrusted as what you call as leaders in the church today. Those leaders have been put there as shepherds. They have been put there in charge of their congregation. They have been put in charge of their churches. They have been put in charge as the body of Christ. People are supposed to be fed by them. People should go to them so that they can be fed. They can be nourished. They can be, they can be nurtured so that now through that nurturing, this shepherd is simply leading them, not to himself, but leading them to the chief shepherd, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. And his name is Jesus Christ. And you know, my sister and brothers, if you and I today understand this responsibility that God has given to you and me, then just like that night when the Lord appeared to the shepherds, he never appeared to anybody in, in Jerusalem. He never appeared to the Pharisees. He never appeared to the priests. He never appeared to the, you know, to the religious leaders. But he appeared to lowly shepherds because lowly shepherds only could understand what it takes, what are the risks involved to look after the sheep, even putting their life on the line. And today, my sister and brothers, if you are listening, if you are really listening to what the Lord is talking to us and what the message is for us today, we, each one of us, if we are really belonging to the chief shepherd, Jesus Christ, we have really made him the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. We have made him the Lord of our life. Then instead of looking for our own protection, looking for our own benefit, looking for our own pleasures, looking at what it is for me, let us look at it. What is it for my brothers and sisters? Let us, let us look at it. What is there that I can give for somebody else and bring them in touch with the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, bring them to the shepherd, even by going through discomfort, even by dying to self, so that I can give them Christ by the love that I myself have received from the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Amen. So brothers and sisters, let's go further. Let's, let's go and see what we can get further out of this. I don't want to take it too long, but I really want to share with you a few nuggets on this, of this so that we really begin to understand the Christmas story from the shepherd's point of view. And then it says in verse number 12, and this shall be a sign unto you, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And I must confess to you, my sister and brothers, many a times because of all this winter, because of a cold winter night, because of all the carols that we sing, because of all, you know, dreaming of white Christmas and all these sort of things. I also thought that swaddling clothes were put upon Jesus because, you know, it was a cold winter night, so he had to be kept free from the cold. Actually speaking, swaddling clothes are nothing but bands of cloth that are given and kept the baby together so that that baby does not, you know, shake or just to give it some sort of, you know, a comfort to, to sleep. So Jesus was given swaddling clothes, not because it was a winter night. He was not given woolen clothes. The sheep were not brought and their, and their wool was not removed to give to Jesus because it was not a cold night. It was not a cold wintry night as, as the songs that we have been singing. So it was not winter. Surely it was not the month that we are celebrating. It was definitely some other time, but we don't really know from scripture when exactly it was, but it was definitely not in the winter. And then it says, Suddenly, in verse number 13, there were a multitude of the angel, of, uh, with the angel, a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. You know, my brothers and sisters, many of us, when we read this scripture, in fact, during the Eucharistic celebration, many a times we read these verses, but do you know, that when, when the angels sang the song, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. You know what was this talking about? It was talking about that when Jesus came and he would go to the cross and he would pay for our sins, the peace that was broken between God and man would now be restored in Christ Jesus. 
It says, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. You know, you must remember, this goodwill towards men would only come when we believed in Jesus, when we believed in the blood of Jesus. So in order for Jesus to be become a man, he had to be born of a woman. He had to come to this earth as man. And that's why when Jesus was born in Bethlehem to Mary, he was born without the original sin because Joseph was not his father, but the Holy Spirit put the seed in Mary and now Jesus was born in Bethlehem as, as a child, as a, as, a, as a man. 100% as man like anybody else, except that he did not have the sin nature which was transmitted to every human being which would have disqualified him to become the spotless lamb of God who would take away the sins of the world. So what does it say in verse number 15? And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. You know, my sister and brothers, as soon as the shepherds hear the good news, as soon as they get this, you know, this, this, this divine celestial uh, encounter from angels, they are now interested to go and find out this manger in Bethlehem and go and see exactly what the angels have said. You know, my brothers and sisters, I told you earlier, because the shepherds were responsible shepherds, because a shepherd always will give his life for his sheep, they were not going to abandon the sheep and just leave them and go, you know, miles away in order to see a babe born in Bethlehem. They ensured that those sheep are taken care in the sheepfold. They ensured that the gatekeeper was told that until they come back, they should not let their sheep go out. And so my sister and brothers, because a shepherd knows his responsibility, now these shepherds would go to see the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, but not abdicating or not, you know, being irresponsible by just leaving their sheep there, not getting excited by all this thing, but ensuring that their sheep are looked after, they are protected until they go all the way, see, their, see the Lord of Lords and come back to their sheep. You know, that's exactly what we see in this verse. Let's go to the next verse quickly. Let's go to this next verse quickly. Okay. And see this which come to pass. Which the, so they are interested to go and see what exactly the angel has told them and they want to see what the Lord has told them. And then it was number 16 and they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. That means my sister and brothers, in that particular manger, Mary could not leave that manger. Remember, they were born under the Jewish custom. So Mary would have been ritually unclean to leave the manger for almost 40 days according to the, to the law of purification. It, told, it says that when a woman has given birth, I'm not going to go to all the scriptures, but according to the law, Mary was ritually unclean. So for 40 days, she would have to stay around in that, in that manger. Imagine for 40 days, what difficulty it would have been for them. They had no place in the inn. And here they have a visitation from the shepherds whom the angels have told and when they come to that manger, they finally find that manger, the Google location, the exact place, the exact, you know, uh, setting has already been told to them. There will be a babe lying in the manger. They will, you will find their mother and father. And that's exactly what these shepherds found when they came to the manger. You know, my sister and brothers, what is the meaning of all this? What is the meaning of all this? You know, the moment the shepherds heard the good news, that this baby Jesus is born. They got the good news from the shepherds. They got the good news that, you know, the, 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 angel, the, the king of kings and the lord of lords is born. You know what they did? They left that place in order to go and see for themselves that what the angels really said was true. And when they came to the manger, they actually saw with their own eyes that truly the baby was born. 
And you know, it says in verse number 18, all they that heard it. Now, all who are they all? It was Mary and Joseph. Just Mary and Joseph. Remember, Mary and Joseph had gone through enough in nine months. Joseph had to accept Mary, even though she was having a child, which was not his own. Mary was told that she was going to be pregnant with the Holy Spirit. And now finally that baby is born. Shepherds are coming. So imagine what is happening to Mary. First and foremost, she's got this child, which is not of Joseph. It's not through a relationship with a man. And now finally shepherds are coming and telling them that, you know, the angels told them about the birth of their baby. So imagine now Joseph is listening to that. Mary is listening to that. And now the shepherds are recounting all those things that the, that the angels have told them. Remember, the shepherds have no idea that a babe is born until the angels have given them this information. But more so, it is for the sake of Joseph and Mary that these shepherds come so that Joseph and Mary's faith will be strengthened, that they will begin to realize now finally, and Joseph now will have it sealed that eventually that what he dreamt that particular night where he had finally had to accept Mary as his wife, knowing that it was not his child. Now when the shepherds come, now it would have sealed it for Joseph because he would realize that Mary was now the chosen virgin who would bear the Messiah. Now it would really be aware. It would, be, it would become like a, it would be stamped in the hearts of Mary and Joseph that this was the chosen child. You know, my sister and brothers, now the shepherds come and they get the good news. Can you imagine? They have got this news not from the priest, not from the mayor, not from the herod, not from the palace. They have got it from heaven. And now when they see this, they become the first persons to receive the good news of the birth of Jesus. They are the first persons to receive the good news of the birth of Jesus. I'm not going to go to verse number 19 because verse number 19 itself is, is a lot. But I'm going to switch over to our last verse, verse number 20. And it says, and the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Remember, my sister and brothers, the shepherds, the shepherds heard, the shepherds heard it from whom? They heard it from angels. They heard the angels tell him that a baby is born in Bethlehem in the manger. And exactly what the angels had said, the shepherds now see with their very own eyes. Can you imagine, my brothers and sisters, if today you had a divine uh, you know, visitor, you had the angel or you had somebody tell you that, you know, this particular news is what is happening in this particular place. And you go there, you have not heard it on the WhatsApp. You have not heard it on, on the television. You have not heard it from any human being. But the moment you opened the good news, you opened your Bible and you read the scriptures and the scriptures said to you, by the stripes and wounds of Jesus, you were healed. It tells you that God will provide you more than enough to meet all your needs. He tells you that what God has joined together, no man shall divide if you're going through a marriage crisis. If he tells you something in the scripture, do you need any human being? You simply go and visit those scriptures. And now you do exactly what the scriptures say. Just like those, angel, those shepherds, they heard the words of the angel and they went to the Bethlehem stable and found that baby as it was born. In the same way today, my sister and brothers, you don't need to go to some holy land or to some mountain or some place. You need to go to the scriptures. You need to go to the word and you simply need to take that word and do exactly without deviating what that word is telling you to do. And surely you will see the glory in your life. Remember, my sister and brothers, if you and I are truly the sheep of the chief shepherd, listen to this very carefully. If you and I are really the sheep of the good shepherd, then surely we are sensitive to the voice of the good shepherd. I want to take you back to John chapter 10, verses 11 to 14. We had, we had studied about this. I want to end back again to the verses that we have already reflected upon because Jesus says something. I want you to dwell on this for the next few days if required for a long, long time. What does Jesus say in verse number 14? He says, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and I'm known of mine. In other words, 
Jesus says he is the good shepherd. He knows his sheep and his sheep know him. His sheep know him. I want to ask each one of us today, my sister and brothers, if Jesus is truly a good shepherd, he's truly a good shepherd. Does my shepherd know me? If my shepherd knows me, do I also know my shepherd? Because if I truly am sensitive to his word, I'm doing what his word says. I'm not only just a hearer, but I'm really a doer of his word. Every time I open the scriptures and I open them and not just read them, I just not hear them. But every time I open the scriptures, I say, Lord, if this what is what your word says, you are my shepherd, you have said it, I'm going to do it. Then surely your, our shepherd knows you. He knows each one of us and we will also know him through his word. And that's why my brothers and sisters, today it is so more important for us that we truly begin to know the word of God. We begin to study the word of God. We just not hear it, but we begin to hear it, reflect on it, meditate on it, and eventually do what it says. And if we do what it says, the good shepherd will take us on a journey. He'll take us to green pastures and he will give us the greatest time of our lives because it blesses him when he sees his sheep really under his sheepfold. He blesses him to see his sheep really, you know, listening to him because he blesses him to see his sheep really blessed to be a blessing to the nations. Amen? Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for making this teaching clearer and clearer every day. We get food, Lord, from you. Yes, Lord. Thank you for the good tidings that you have brought to us. We should keep this joy in our hearts 365 days. The news, great joy, which shall be to all people, you said. And we give glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace and goodwill to all men. We keep that in our hearts and in our mouths all the time and give glory to God. And as you said, Jesus, in 2 Corinthians 9.15, thanks, it's said there, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift, his gift, Lord, which you gave us. is a gift within a gift because, Lord, you were born and then you also died for us. And that has redeemed us, has forgiven us all our sins. Let us ask ourselves, is my life holy enough for the gift given to, to me? You know, we do, let, us, let us remember the babe in the manger. It's the same Jesus who we find in the beautiful act of forgiveness on the cross. Lord, I remember the people who who like we, we hurt so much. Let us also, as you forgave, let us also remember to forgive. And while we are celebrating your birthday, let us also, you know, the gift of all gifts, how you gave us, you died on the cross for us, like that we also will remember. Help us to understand that like you did, Lord, we are able to gift our brothers and sisters with forgiveness. Give us the courage and strength to celebrate your coming in this world in the true way of a disciple. Like it's meant to celebrate with a heart of forgiveness and love, Lord. And keep on, and, and remember your words, Jesus, that we are, you are our good shepherd and we are your sheep. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit for this beautiful teaching. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace and goodwill to all men. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Sister Joyce. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. 